Hello students, in this video we'll show the set of real numbers satisfies the least upper bound principle. We recall that the real numbers are the set of all alpha, such that alpha is a Dedekind cut. Okay. And we claim that R satisfies the least upper bound property. R satisfies the least upper bound property. Okay, to prove this, we assume that there's a set A, that's a subset of R, that's non-empty and bounded above. Let A be a subset of R, non-empty, and bounded above. And remember, we say that alpha, just recall, we say that alpha is less than beta, so one real number is less than another real number, if and only if, if and only if, alpha is a proper subset of beta. Okay, that's our notion of what less than means. And of course, less than or equal to, we know what alpha equals beta means, alpha equals beta means those two sets are identical to each other. Okay, good. So now, we have a non-empty bounded set that's bounded above. And so what does A look like? So A is a collection of alpha, where alpha is a dead and cut. Of some form. Okay. And let's let B, B in upper bound, of the set A. And so A is a collection of Dedekind cuts, so what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to define a Dedekind cut, which I like to show this as a Dedekind cut, so I'm going to define a beta. to be the union over all alpha and A of alpha. So I unite every single thing in the collection A. Okay. Now I claim that this beta is a Dedekind cut. So claim beta is a real number. Okay. Well, what do we know? We know that a is not empty, so A not empty implies that there's an alpha zero in A, and that means that since beta is the union of all these, A and alpha, that everything in A zero is in beta, and A zero is not empty, A zero not empty implies that uh, beta is not empty. Likewise, since none of them are all of all of Q, we know that there is a, and B is an upper bound, there's something that's not in B, so B is an upper bound implies that beta is not all of Q. Okay, good. All right, so that satisfies the first condition of a cut. Now I need the second condition of a cut. So let's suppose that S is in beta, and let's suppose that S tilde is less than S. Well, if S is in beta, that says that S is in alpha one for some alpha one in A. And what does that tell us? That tells us that S tilde is in alpha one because alpha 1's a cut. And that tells us that since S tilde is in alpha 1, S tilde is in beta. S tilde is in beta, and that's the second property of cuts, that anything less than something in a cut is itself in a cut. And finally, if, uh, let's say, R is in beta, then R is in alpha 2, 
for some alpha 2 in A, which means that there exists an R tilde in alpha 2 such that R less than R tilde. And furthermore, since R tilde is in alpha 2, that says that R tilde is in beta, and therefore it satisfies property 3 of the cut. So this, this beta over here is a real number. And furthermore, what do we claim? Furthermore, we claim that this beta is actually the supremum of the set A. We claim that beta is the supremum of, of A. Okay? All right, good. So what do we know? So we know... So I need to prove two things. The first thing I need to show is that beta is an upper bound. So let A, let alpha, alpha be in A. So if alpha is anything in this subset of R, then alpha is contained in the union over all alpha tilde in A of alpha tilde, because alpha is one of these things in A, and that says that this beta is an upper bound. So that's the first condition for supremum, that it has to be an upper bound, so it certainly is an upper bound. And furthermore now, what we can do is, since, now I need to show that if, if gamma is strictly less than beta, that means that gamma is a proper subset of this union, which means that gamma, gamma is a proper subset, so gamma is a proper subset of the union. Since it's a proper subset, it's missing one of the, one of the things in the um, union over here. I mean, this hence, there is an alpha tilde with alpha tilde not completely contained in gamma. Alpha not completely contained in gamma. which means that gamma is missing things in beta, so that gamma, there's some A in A that is not, that gamma does not contain. So gamma some little a in alpha, and that's a contradiction, so that says that gamma is not upper bound. And the conclusion, therefore, is that this beta is, in fact, the supremum of A. So the supremum of A is a real number, and it exists in the set of real, is a, is a real number, and it's an upper bound, and it's moreover, it's the least upper bound. So therefore, the supremum exists in the set R. Thank you very much.